Hey, what's up guys? Tony here and watch some more R Factor 2. This is a, I guess it would be considered the British Touring Car Cup at uh, Sebring. But basically what it is is that I was looking through uh, the Steam Workshop and I found Focus ST. And I'm like, yes please, I'm downloading that and I'm going to run this thing. And I, I wanted to run it at more of a British Touring Car Cup um, track, like Brent's Hatch or something like that. Uh, I don't think I have one, but anyways, I saw Sebring, I downloaded Sebring as well, so I was like, you know what, let's do it Sebring. It's a track that I'm familiar with, and uh, I don't know, I just thought it'd be a lot of fun. So we've got a five lap race here, uh, the AI strength is set to 95, I think, and the AI aggression is set to 75. This race, I, I probably attempted to record this about like seven or eight times and actually had to stop in the middle of the recording so the reason why I'm not qualified is because I just came in started the session um, and I skipped all the way to the race and I noticed that it seems as if now like I'm still kind of getting to know the AI of R Factor but it seems that uh, the AI is adaptive to a certain extent because before the, the races that I had before and the reason why I, I didn't keep those races is because I'm really particular I want to make sure my races are clean so when I straight up punt a car I'm like ugh gotta start over you know I think I was and then oh initially it was like 10 laps I was gonna do 10 laps of Sebring I'm like ooh I don't want to do a 20 minute video I just I want to do like a shorty little video talk about the Focus ST uh, and about AI and stuff. So, anyways, um, I had uh, like 10 laps set up, and I'm like, oh, that's too long. But I had run about, oh, I don't know, seven different races, never finished them. I mean, I got probably like five or six laps into one, and I straight up just like punted someone and spun myself out, and I was like, yep, yeah, well, can't can't keep that one. <laughs> I like to show clean races. Um, but what happened is when I came in there, so the first, the first, uh, race, the, the, all the, the seven that I had just mentioned, they're all based upon the same session. So I went in, I practiced for about, I don't know, 35 minutes qualified and, uh, I got DQ'd. So like, the, it's funny because it, it, when you're qualifying, they're like, here, you've got three laps to do it. Well, really you've got your one lap then you've got your qualifying lap. And then if you run that last lap, you're DQ'd says you ran it four, you had four laps. So it was like, oh, that's really weird. Uh, so anyways, I, did, I got disqualified, so that's why I was in the back of the pack. Um, so what I was going to say about the AI is that it seems as if it's adaptive. Now, I don't know. So if you guys are R-Factor racers, please let me know. But in my experience now, keeping the AI um, difficulty the same and the aggression the same, I, I'm smoking these guys. Like, they're... Their lap times were like 220s, 230s, 240s, and here I was running 217s to uh, 219s, depending on traffic. And I, you know, it was it was a fun run. It wasn't as fun as going door to door uh, with the AI and, uh, and and you know not being able to easily catch up to them and pass them. But still, I mean, it's a good run. Getting that out of the way. Um, if you guys have been on the channel, following the channel for a while, then you know that actually I own a 2015 Focus ST. Uh, obviously, this one is the British Touring Car Cup one uh, based upon the 2013-2014 Focus ST body. It's obviously right-hand drive, um, which doesn't bother me. You know, I raced a V8 supercar for a very long time, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, it's a mod, so it's, it's not accurate to uh, what the car looks like on the interior like I you know you look at like a 2013-2014 ST uh, it's kind of has the shape of the dash and you kind of get an idea but really honestly when you look at it it could just be anything uh, I love the way the car feels I love the way it sounds um, more importantly I just like looking at it in the replays you know it's just it's fun to have your car in a game and it's really was the same way with um uh, oh, Need for Speed. So Need for Speed has the 2016 Focus RS, which, you know, it's not my car, but it looks a shit ton like my car. Uh, the 2015s, 2016s, they're, styling-wise, they're very similar. Well, I mean, the STs, the, you know, 15, 16 STs are sim they're identical, 
but um, the RS is basically that base form, just with different bumpers, different spoiler, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, anyway, so it's just cool to have your car in a game. There were like when I was playing Gran Turismo and uh, any of the er other early racing games like Forza, like I always wanted my car in the game. But I never owned a car that was in a game before, you know, because it wasn't like a sports car. I, I owned an old 80s uh, Honda Prelude, and then I had a Mitsubishi Mirage, which was in Gran Turismo, not the coupe, but the Cyborg, the hatchback, which I always loved that one. It was never that fast. I mean, when you compare it to like a Civic or something, it was just was never fast. Uh, and then my other car was a Toyota Corolla. Like, yeah, that's going to be in a game. <laughs> it's like, no. Like I said, it's kind of cool. It's super cool to have it in, in, in a game. And I actually really want to uh, do this a little bit more with the Focus ST and do more of this uh, British Touring Car Cup because it's something that's totally different from iRacing. You know, iRacing we have, as far as front-wheel drive is concerned, we have the Kia Optima, and then we have the uh, Volkswagen Jetta, the diesel Jetta. And it's just a totally different experience, and uh, I think it's underrated. I, I think people look at front-wheel drive, and they're like, eh, no, it's not rear-wheel drive. It's just horrible. No one should race that. But I honestly have a lot of fun banging around in a front-wheel drive car. I mean, I love my car. I love drag racing my car. Eventually, I want to take it to the track and get to the point where I can go to, like, Willow Springs, um, or any other local tracks like Laguna Seca, that would be like my dream. Even though I'm not very good at that track in iRacing, that would be super cool to have a track day at Laguna Seca with the ST and just kind of have a field day of it. So I guess I'm kind of uh, vicariously living through R Factor's mods uh, and taking an ST you know, out on the track. And that's kind of where I hope to go eventually. So. Anyways, um, if you guys, like I said, if you're R-Factor racers, please let me know if I'm kind of heading in the right direction with regards to the AI. I have a basic understanding of the AI, so I get that when you turn it above 100%, then uh, it corner, they corner faster, they've got faster trailing speed. They're just basically your, what a human can do and then some. But like I said, it was interesting to see that participating in the session up to the race yielded a completely different result as far as um, being within a certain range, like a grouping. The AI was far closer to where I was. Um, I think I would have qualified first place, uh, in first position, first place. Um, P1. <laughs> How many synonyms for being, uh, you know, first place can I come up with? But anyways, um, I think that it just felt like that was sort of okay here's where the player is and we'll build the AI around him um, and then jumping in you know and not participating in either of the sessions and going right to the race it just felt as if the AI was completely slow and granted I mean some things could have changed like weather but I don't think I changed anything in the set as far as the weather is concerned um, I had specifically made it to clear weather and uh, I changed track temperature to be very favorable just so I can get in and have a good race and not have to worry about changing the set or whatever. So, uh, like I said, let me know. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. But the other thing I want to mention is, like I, I mentioned in my iRacing video, uh, I fixed my uh, my brake pedal because that was it was dragging the brake. <laughs> so when I was griping about how the AI was walking me, that's because I had hardware failure. And that's gone now. So, anyways, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, it's a nice little break from my racing. And also, like I said, I, I kind of want to build um, a uh, sort of British Touring Car Cup. And so, if you guys have any suggestions for like tracks that you've run that work really well, um, please let me know in the comment section so I can kind of get around to doing that. Because I'm really, really enjoying R Factor more than I actually thought. And a lot of it, I think, just has to do with the fact that I've got my pedals squared away. And so I don't feel like I'm just getting smoked for no reason. So, uh, like I said, yeah, let me know. Um, let me know. Actually, the other thing I, I need to know, because I, I need to find, is, is other places where you can download cars and tracks beyond just the Steam uh, workshop. Because if there's a way to do it 
sort of third party and then just throw the files into the proper folders. I need to look into that. I just haven't had time just yet, but yeah. So let me know, and then let me know about any tracks that might be pretty good for that are already in R Factor or R Factor's uh, mod workshop. That would be good for like a British Touring Car Cup sort of a series. So, anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and uh, shall talk to you guys later.